Hey guys, this is Naren Zade with the Hammer Bros, and I'm bringing you game three of the Crossroads GT 2015. Uh, my opponent here is playing Empire. Uh, his name is Matt, and he is a hilarious guy. If you ever get the opportunity to play against him, I strongly recommend it. He's um, he's like he's like a Chris Farley that plays Warhammer. He's amazing. Uh, so he deploys uh, our, our scenario is meeting engagement here, uh, and I deploy first. So I want to use this uh, hill here to block my Storm Vermin, my Gray Seer, and my Hell Pit. And I have both of my cannons over here to the far right, as you can see in this picture. This is after movement, but I wanted to show you this just so you could see my deployment. I'm going to go back to the other picture now. Um, you can see that there's a large space here in the back, and I was hoping I could get my gutter runners in. But unfortunately, there wasn't enough space. So he's got a cannon in the woods, a cannon on the far left. There's another unit of knights there that are out of frame. And above that is a unit of inner circle knights with his BSB and his level 4 to life. It's a steam tank there. There's two Hellblaster volley guns with two engineers and a unit of demis. And all the way in the upper right here are a unit of knights. So what I do to enrollment is I keep my hell pit out of the 24 inch range of the, excuse me, Hellblaster volley guns. And I random move my doom wheel towards his knights to hopefully get some shots off. During the magic phase, I don't do anything because I'm out of range with everything, being 24 inches away. So what I do is I go to shooting. My doom wheel gets, I think it's strength 10, strength 8 shots. And he pops off three of the knights. The knights fail their panic check and they run off the board. I shoot my warp lightning at his cannon. And I don't... And I deal two wounds to it, and then I shoot my other warplaning, and it does zero wounds. So we move to his turn. You can see here he doesn't move very much. Um, you can see the two wounds over there on that cannon up top. During the magic phase, he goes to cast Throne of Vines with his the couple dice that he has, and he does so irresistibly. He ignores the miscast, and he heals a wound off of his cannon. During the shooting phase, the Hellblaster Volley Guns don't have anything to shoot at. So he takes a pot shot of my doom wheel with both cannons and pops the doom wheel with uh, the second cannonball. So we go to Skaven turn. What I do is I move a little bit just to reposition my uh, storm, my storm vermin, just so I can see those knights if they decide to do anything tricky. Um, I move my hell pit up, as you can see here in the next picture, and I turn those storm vermin this way. I can scout in my gunner runners, one of them come in, or I ambush them in, one of them comes in here. I'm going to take care of that cannon at the top. So during the magic phase, I'm again out of range for pretty much everything. I cast Howling Warp Gale at this point, or I believe I try to, and I he dispels it. Um, it's at this point that Matt shows that he's a true sportsman, so I put down the rest of my dice, and I move on to the shooting phase, and I take my my shots. I do five wounds to the steam tank with both my cannons. And then we get to the close combat phase, or the, the start of his movement phase. And I'm, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and I take some shots at the uh, cannon here and destroy it with the shots from the gutter runners. And then I say, oh, I forgot, I forgot the Dispel Throne of Vines. And uh, he said, well, you can, you can just roll now, it doesn't matter. I mean, you had five dice, there's nothing I could do. And I went back, we went back and forth a couple times, and uh, ultimately he let me... Dispel Throne of Vines, and, you know, it's just stuff like that, where at this point I knew that if he needed, you know, if, if he forgot anything, or he wanted to, you know, change his move a little bit, maybe in the shooting phase or whatever, you know, I would have obviously given it to him, so, uh, you know, that's just a, that's just a little sportsmanship that we have up here, and it's, uh, it really shows, and it's great. So, we go to his movement phase, and he tries to smash my gutter runners here with his steam tank. Uh, he misses it by a couple inches, and as you can see here, he fails his dangerous terrain check with uh, the steam tank, but rolls a one to wound. So he only takes one wound from that that fail. So that's pretty pretty impressive. Uh, during the magic phase, he goes to cast Throne of Vines. I dispel it, and then he goes to cast. I think it was Flesh to Stone. No, I'm sorry, it was Regrowth on the steam tank. It goes off irresistibly, and he loses three wizard levels and forgets all of his spells except for Flesh to Stone. So, 
That's quite the blow to him. And, you know, after he let me dispel Throne of Vines, I felt even worse about it. But, you know, that's that's what happened. So, uh, during the shooting phase, he turns his Hellblaster Volley Guns and shoots at my Storm Vermin. But I activated the Storm Banner at the start of this point. Or, I'm sorry, my Gutter Runners, and I activated the Storm Banner at the start of the turn. So, he doesn't get any shots to hit, and they don't wound, I believe. So... They're fine. He rolls his steam gun, and he does two wounds, and they panic off the board. So that was unfortunate, but, you know, what are you going to do? You can see my engineer here. Um, I, for, I forgot to mention that during my Melee's Magic phase, I skitter leaped him over here so I could warp lightning his engineers. Uh, and he shoots his cannon, and or he's unable to shoot his cannon because of the storm banner. We go to my turn. On my turn, I ambush in my gutter runners over here. You can see that I've forced them to kind of turn around here. Um, my During the magic phase, I'm still not doing anything because he's more than 24 inches away from me. So I'm just, you know, playing this long game shooting cannons and, um, and whatnot. So I skip my magic phase, essentially, and we go to the close, or to the, uh, or no, I'm sorry. In the magic phase, I warp lightning the... Uh, engineer, I throw a five at it, I think, and I miscast, and I don't, and he rolls to wound and doesn't wound me. I pop that engineer. Everyone passes their panic checks. My gutter runners on this end shoot their shots at this cannon and take it out. So as you can see here, this is where that kind of stands. Uh, we move. What is this next picture here showing? Oh yes, I. Uh, this is after my shooting. This is a continuation of the shooting phase. I take out the steam tank with my other two cannon shots, dealing the last five wounds to it, four or five wounds. So that's the end of that. Uh, he reforms like so during his turn and turns to face these uh, storm vermin, or these uh, gutter runners over here. Uh, he takes, he doesn't cast anything in his magic phase and during his shooting phase, he uh, takes a whole bunch of shots at these gutter runners. They're only in range of the, no, they're both in range, but he only gets two wounds through and I make both of my six upward saves. So I get very lucky there, but uh, clearly clearly the Neo is with me as uh, as Matt was, uh, Matt was screaming, so it was excellent. We go to my movement phase. Um, I pop out my Doom Rocket guy. Uh, I cast Howling Warp Gale to uh, lower the ballistic skill. I shoot my Warp Lightnings at the Hellblasters, but I'm getting like three and I'm getting two and four strength, so I don't do anything there. But my gutter runners do manage to get a few shots off, and they do take out the single, the other Hellblaster volley gun. So at this point, it's looking like Matt doesn't have a lot to lose. Um, so he moves up in his, he moves up and charges both of his night units into my storm vermin, and he turns the Hellblaster volley gun on my gutter runners again. And this time, I'm only getting long range, soft cover, and skirmish, so we need sixes. He rolls. He rolls one hit or one wound out of all the hits and wounds and whatnot. He misfired, I think, twice this time, so he only had like six shots. And he does a wound, and I make my six up ward again. Uh, this is after the close combat phase. I do a whole bunch of wounds with my Red Ogre, um, Bone Breaker. This is after the second round, so I missed the picture here. Sorry, guys. Um, but I he charges me here. I stick with my rats. I do a whole bunch of wounds due to my potion of strength. Um, we go to my turn during the magic phase. I get death frenzy off on this unit, so this is you know where all these wounds come from. I kill all of the knights except for the ones you see here, and I flank charge with the scaven with the scaven slaves there. So that's almost a foregone conclusion. I move my hell but I move my hell pit up here. Um, you can see the rat dart over here. I had been moving them just around the board, you know, near the flank of the hell pit, and I pop them in front of the demi. So when he charges. He's going to hit them and, you know, over, I have to overrun a reform. Uh, after the combat down there, we see the knights break, uh, not the charge. They run away, they attempt to run away, but I catch them with a 10 from the storm vermin. So that's where those units both end up. And there is the one lone knight fleeing away who I don't, who I didn't chase because it didn't have the level four uh, or, you know, and with, the unit was worth much less. So my hell pit moves in to take out the rest of the demis. I hit it and I do six impact hits, 
I deal three or four wounds, and then I avalanche of flesh, and I pop another demi. Uh, the demis lose, they're not steadfast, and they run off the board. Um, so that's the end of them. During the shooting phase, I take out his Hellblaster volley gun, and then I shoot two shots, I believe, at the Lone Knight, and I'm unable to wound him with my Warp Lightning Cannon, and that's the end of turn six. So this is another big win for me. Um, the biggest and most important thing here is that I was able to keep the initiative. And I mentioned at the start of the game that, you know, he, that I would have to move forward um, because of his gun line, but I didn't think that that was necessarily the case because I had the gutter runners to get rid of his war machines, and once I got rid of the cannons, then I, then I had range superiority. And once the cannons are gone, you know, and I'm shooting warp lightnings at his night unit, he's he's got to do something or I'm going to win. So he came at me and ended up not working out. So my game plan worked, but if he was able to seize the initiative, I would have been much more worried because he would have been able to take the shots on my cannons before I got to go. I would have had to activate the storm banner out of order. It's it's much less devastating when you know you activate it first, and then it also affects my shooting phase by chance. So here's an excellent shot of Long Island Wargaming. We were at uh, Garcia's, and he was quite excited for his uh, burrow. I can't remember exactly what it was called. But it was the it was quite possibly the largest burrito I've ever seen. Uh, it came with taquitos, um, steak, and chicken, and a quesadilla. I can't remember quite, but that's a picture of the monstrosity that we had there. Uh, you know, there were like thirty or forty of us hanging out at Garcia's, and that was when I saw my my round four opponent, the illustrious Keith Conroy. So I'm. Uh, I was pretty nervous about it, but I'll wait till the next game. So I appreciate you guys watching.